Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the absolute, and I know I always say this, the cutest stuffies. Uh, I'm calling them Divided Heart. They're bowl fillers uh, for, they're patriotic, so for Memorial Day or for um, Fourth of July, and you could use these for Valentine's Day, you could do this idea for pretty much any holiday of the year. So as you're hopping on, say hello. Um, let me know where you're watching from. Let's see. Here it is. The comments will be right there. So sorry, I have company um, for the next couple of days, and um, it's my stepmother who's traveled here all the way from Idaho, and tomorrow, hopefully, we are going to do some macrame keychains. Anyways, can you see comments? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm going to start at the very beginning and take you all the way through to the end, show you a bunch of different options, and what this starts out with, this is what it would go into eventually. A lot of you guys have asked me, what is a dough bowl? <laughs> uh, when I've done other dough bowl projects, this is what they used to make their bread in and let the bread ri rise uh, in the olden days. And they're fun to decorate with. Uh, okay, so our project starts with some uh, canvas duck cloth from Walmart. Uh, this stuff is around $6 a yard. Um, you can buy it at any fabric store. It's thick. It's really great to work with. And I've made a ton of different stuffies using this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own fabric. We're going to be using some pattern stencils, which are my absolute favorite. Uh, as you're hopping on, tell me where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, all that normal good stuff. Okay, so before I went live, I made some fabric. I'm going to show that to you, and then we're going to actually do it. Um, this is the one I'm liking the best so far. This is called Lace and Berries, or something like that. Lace and Berries stencil, and I used red ink. Here is the polka dot, which is adorable. I used blue ink. Here is that flower power stencil that I love so much in blue ink. Um, this is the mini plaid in red. I also have some mini plaid in blue. And here's a red polka dot. And here's a red Victorian pattern. So I did all of these this morning. And then when my fabric was dry, I heat set it with a hot iron, and I'll show you that process in just a second. Um, but basically, to stencil on canvas duck or any other kind of fabric, you're just going to want to have a piece that's not terribly wrinkled, like this one. And I'm going to be using this stencil right here, which is the Lace Berries stencil. I'm loving this one. All of a sudden, uh, and I'm going to lay it over the top of my fabric. It's a little bit bigger than the fabric that I have here, so that's great. Let's see, I do want to start at the top. And press it down. And if you're new, uh, these stencils are mesh. They're adhesive. They're a little bit stretchy. They're super versatile. I've used them a zillion times. This one is a perfect example. This is my vintage, uh, my Victoria stencil, and I've used this at least 50 times, if not more. And I used it again today, and it looks terrible, but it works just fine. So they're reusable many, 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 many times. And I'm going to be using some blue ink. They also have a red, which I did half the projects with red and half with blue. And just get a little stir stick. And this is one of the small cut apart squeegees. And I'm just going to take a blob and put it here. Let me scooch my camera back just a little bit. Okay, oops. 
Now I'm not aimed in the right direction. There we go. Okay, so I have my blobs of ink on here and I'm basically just gonna push the ink through the holes on my stencil using this little squeegee. Super easy. Um, you get the feel for it pretty quickly. And uh, the main thing about stenciling with ink on fabric is that you want to resist the urge to keep going over and over and over it. Because when you do that, you make mistakes, like I've made a few on camera, and you can push too much medium underneath your stencil and then it just looks kind of blurry, which is not a great look. Okay, so this is what that looks like. And in case you're wondering why didn't she fuzz her stencil, uh, I didn't fuzz it because I've used it quite a bit and also because when you're stenciling on fabric, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to fuzz it on fabric before you do that. So I'm just going to lift this up. This is such a great stencil. And I'm going to throw my little stencil over here in a tub of water until I can get out to the kitchen to clean it. For a paper towel. And I'll show you what we've got here. This will take probably an hour and a half to be fully dry. This is how the pattern actually goes, I think. Um, it'll be fully dry in an hour and a half, two hours. And then to heat set it, once it's dry, you're just going to, this is my little crack room iron. <laughs> you're gonna lay a piece of parchment paper over the top of your fabric. Turn your iron onto cotton. Um, no steam, and you're, it isn't really plugged in, but you're just going to go over and over and over and over and over it for three or four minutes, and then it is heat set. And essentially that ink has melted into the fibers of the fabric. So if it was a t-shirt or a tea towel or a pillow or a tote bag or something like that, you could actually wash it and it would not go away. Um, if I did heat set all of my product, all of my stuff here before I am coming live. Okay, and then we'll set this over here so I don't mess it up while it's drying. All right, then the next thing I did is I decided that I wanted these split hearts. And um, so I made myself a pattern out of computer paper, which I do that all the time. There's nothing specific about this, but I will measure it because I know you guys will ask. Um, basically, I just drew a heart that I thought was about the right size. And if you do it on a piece of paper that's folded in half, it'll be symmetrical. Um, so that's all there is to it, to making a pattern. And we're going to use that for the front and the back of our project. Okay, the, my current pattern, from the point where the heart goes down right here to the bottom is five and a half inches. And from side to side, it's about six and a half inches, just so you know. Okay, and then you're going to make a front and a back. And to make the front, you are going to want, so you can see which one I haven't used yet, I guess. Let's see. We'll do this one. This is the buffalo. Um, this stencil comes with two pieces. It comes with the polka dots, and it also comes with this mini check. All right, so I'm going to fold this in half. Mia, stop. Mia is in here. Uh, doing her ho, 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 ho thing, in case you're wondering <laughs> what that noise is. Okay, and then I'm going to fold my heart in half, and I'm not going to put it all the way up to the crease, because I want to leave enough room that we can hook two sides together, and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm just going to use some push pins to pin my pattern onto my piece of fabric that I created. And you guys, 
You can do this idea for any season of the year in any color. Uh, just using this canvas deck fabric and some all over pattern stencils. So it's really pretty cool. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut it out and I'll, so I left this margin right here. And I'll show you why. Tell me in the comments, I'm curious to know, who has a dough bowl? Who decorates with a dough bowl? Do any of you guys do that? Last time I was making something for a dough bowl, quite a few people said, what is a dough bowl? And um, I showed you one of mine, something like this, in case you're just hopping on. Okay, so I cut my piece of fabric out and I left this margin right here. And now I'm just gonna snip it. And basically what we're gonna end up with is two hearts, two half hearts. Because I'm doing these divided patriotic hearts, like this one. Isn't that cute? What do you guys think? And this one. And I have a blue one. I have them in various stages of being complete. Okay, so that is that step. Then you're going to cut out a whole heart using this same pattern. And this is gonna be the back. And you can use a pattern piece of fabric that you made. I'm just gonna use plain, because I don't think you really need necessarily to decorate the back. So I just put my pattern on and cut it out. All right, and then, Mia, stop. And then we're going to put two different ones together. Hopefully my hot glue gun is hot at this point. And um, this one was the first one I made. And I have to tell you guys, I had a heck of a time getting my sewing needle to go from the front to the back to sew this button on because I wanted this dimension. Can you see that? And it's because I had so many layers of glue. So on the second one that I made, I figured out what you can do to not have so many layers of glue. And about at the middle of my two different pieces of hearts, I put a pin to remind myself, don't glue that area. I'll turn this so these are closer to even. Okay, so I'm using my low temperature hot glue gun that is a Sherbonder Cool Shot. And I did get glue on my fingers when I was working on these projects, so I definitely recommend that you use a low temperature one. Paula says she has a dough bowl. Oh, I didn't see your question, I'm so sorry. Nida says she has dough bowls. Yeah, they're, um, they're kind of that rustic look. So I'm gonna be gluing this spot where my two pieces go together and I put them like this, face to face. So this seam will disappear. So this is the part where you can get some glue on your fingers when you're pushing your two pieces together. So I did a little bit of glue in between the top and I'll do a little bit of glue. You could also sew these, but I know not everybody has a sewing machine, so hot glue works too. Okay, and I'm going to show you what this looks like just so you understand, and then we'll go on to the next step. See, I merged those two, but there's this little spot that I didn't glue shut so that I can sew a button on there without using a pair of pliers because <laughs> it was seriously difficult. Okay, and then the next thing you want to do is you wanna take this little hem and you wanna glue it to one side or the other just so it will lay flat, but don't glue that center part. This is all the stuff that I've been figuring out this morning. 
before I came live. Okay, and I still have this spot here in the center that doesn't have any glue that I'll be able to sew through. And I need to trim up the bottom. Can you see this right here? Okay, this is going to be absolutely adorable. Okay, and then I'm just using some of this lace ribbon from Dollar Tree. I have several different kinds. So I'm going to do two pieces of this going crisscross. not matter but in case you're wondering it's four and three quarters inches and I'm going to lay these on here crisscross like that can you guys see by the way if these comments right here if you're watching on Facebook if they're in your way yes Kathy I'm using a hot glue gun but not fabric glue this is just regular glue because I don't intend to ever wash these in the washing machine, so there's no reason to use that more expensive hot glue. Mia, stop. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to do this crisscross on here, but I'm not going to glue it right at the spot where I know I'm going to want to sew this button through. This is what I learned in my mistake on my first one. And that's why I always do my projects first before I come live. So I can figure out what are the good things to do and what are the bad things to do. <laughs> Sorry, you're entertaining the dog. Okay, and then this is just a slightly different style of lace. And I'm going to just put this across. We can trim the length if we want to later. Yeah, it looks very, it's very, very long. I'm going to trim it right now. Okay, and I'm going to put just two blobs of glue where I'll still be able to sew. Okay, and this is what I have so far. So I didn't glue in this area where I want to sew on a button. And I am, oh shoot, I forgot to thread my needle. Um, I'm just going to pick any button. I want a button that has two holes. That works. These are those vintage mother of pearl buttons that I love so much. And I'm going to get a needle out of my needle book that we made. Did you guys remember when we did this video and I showed you how to make these? It's a great way to store your sewing needles. And you can make it cute at the same time. I also made one of these to hold my um, crochet needles. Okay. So I'm going to do my needle. Put my glasses on. Step in the light so I can see what I'm doing. skinny needle that has a super tiny eye thinking it would be easier to get through the multiple layers of um, canvas and I didn't think about how hard it would be to thread it. Okay so then I'm going to start from the back of the front and I'm going to Put my needle through and grab one of the little holes in my button and then I'm going to go back through on the other side So this is what I have so far, and there's glue strings galore. This center piece on my heart is still not glued, but it has the um, sewing, so I don't think it's even necessary. Okay, now we're going to attach our back, which if your back completely matches up with your front, 
you are lucky. <laughs> Most likely you're going to have to do some trim. So then we're just going to do oh, three or four times through. Are you underwhelmed or overwhelmed watching? That's okay. awesome. Yeah. Very interesting. I'm reading the comments. <laughs> okay. All right. So I did. I did three times through, and then I'm just going to grab a little piece of fabric right here, run my needle through it, make a knot or two. And cut it off. Mia. What are you doing? Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. See, the two pieces are sewn together, just in the center. And now, what we're gonna do, oh boy, <laughs> this is way off, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna start doing from the bottom. sheet to get some of these glue strings off that are in my way. So in the past when we've made stuffies, we have glued more of it together all at once. But I need to stuff this area underneath the area where the button is stitched on, so I don't want to do it too far up. You can see. All right, and I am also going to trim this because, guys, look, <laughs> it is hard to get them the same size. And some of this I can trim after they're glued together and stuffed. So what do you guys think about this project so far? Carla, or I think it's Carla, thank you so much for sprinkling. I really appreciate that. If anyone else has friends who like craft projects, feel free to sprinkle this video to your social media as well. Okay, so we're going to be using some polyfill crafters fiber fill. This came from Walmart a long time ago. It lasts forever. Um, it's kind of stiffer polyfill, and I like that. Um, the whole bag was, I don't know, eight or nine dollars. You could also take a pillow apart, something that you don't love anymore, and use the filling that's in that, or, I mean, you could possibly use plastic bags. Okay, so I'm going to poke some of my fill down in the bottom of this heart, underneath the button. Thank you, Doris, for sprinkling. I appreciate that. Would it have been easier to sew a button on after you sewed, after you filled it? You could, but I think it would be maybe more difficult because you'd be going through so much more. I don't know. If that works, if you try it and that works, tell me. Okay, so I just stopped at the very bottom and I'm gonna continue gluing and move up. You do wanna poke your polyfill all the way in before you lay down your glue because it is hot when it's in the glue and you can burn yourself doing that. just a minute I'm going to show you all of the stencils that I used and I'll show you the fabrics that we created again I'll tell you which ones are my favorites after I get this puppy glued up I think it would be super fun to fill a, a dough bowl with pine cones or rattan balls and either three or five stuffed hearts and I would probably do one that is um, red and blue like this or like this and then I would do one that is all red. This is the cutest one, I think. And one that is all blue. And that would be adorable. So 
So I put some in and we're just going to continue working up to the top. This is the part where you could be burning your fingers, so you definitely want to be using a low temperature hot glue gun. So as soon as I am finished, I will read all of your comments, answer questions. Um, but if you have questions, feel free to ask them. If you want the links to the ink or the stencils that I'm using, just say links. Um, if you want to sprinkle, that would be great. The hardest part on the ones I've made so far was getting this little part where the heart goes down, making sure that you have some stuffing in there so you'll get that kind of pooch. A, um, a garland as well. Okay, and there we go. That's it. So the ones I've made so far, I made this one that is the Vic Victorian pattern and then the dots and mini plaid. Okay, am I working? I think I am. I'm so sorry about that. That was my youngest uh, who is out west. Can you see me? Uh -huh. and he was FaceTiming me. I have never talked to this child as much in his whole life as I have since he moved away. So I did those two and I did this one. This is the one I like the best. I absolutely love this lace and berry stencil and I have another one that I will work on off camera and get pictures. This is the Flower Power stencil with the mini plaid. So I think it would be so cute to do a bowl that had a mix, one with two colors, and then two others in the same color but different patterns. All right, let me show you what the stencils are. And then, yeah, if you have questions, let me know. If you want links, uh, if you've been following this page for any amount of time, you know that this is my favorite. Um, I have a better, newer one too, but I've had this for almost two years and I've used it a gazillion times and I've made all kinds of stuffies and different things out of it. In fact, we made this embroidery hoop pin cushion a couple weeks ago using that stencil and some white ink. So that's one. This is the, what the uh, polka, the mini dot and plaid looks like. You get this all in one piece and you can just cut it in half. That's a great one. And then this is the um, Flower Power. That's a new one that I love so much. And then the one that I, that's in my tub soaking, is the Lace Berry that I used to create this. So, that is pretty much our project for today. Um, if you decide to do something like this, I would love to see pictures. If you haven't joined the other group that I have, which is called Dreamy, D-I-Y, um, I'd love for you to join us over there, share pictures of your craft projects. You're just going to type in Dreamy, and then there's a space, D-I-Y, in your search bar here on Facebook, and it should take you to that group. Be sure to answer the questions, and then myself or my administrator will let you in, and then you can get a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, and sit down for an hour and look at a bazillion other people's craft projects, their photos that they posted there. It's really great. If you feel like you are tapped out, you have no creative juices, that is a great thing to do. So um, I hope that you liked this idea. There's so many different possibilities of combinations.
that you could do. It was really not hard at all. And um, yeah. If you want to see what I have coming up tomorrow and then over the weekend for Christ and Crafting, do it this or this. That's a heart. Say something to me in the comments. Feel free to uh, like and follow this page. Um, and all those things make it a little bit more likely that Facebook will actu actually show you what I have going on here. So that's the best way to, um, and you can say something in the comments as well. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will get close-up pictures later today. I'll put them here in the comments as well, as well as over at DIY Dreaming. Let me know if you want links to any of these stencils. Yes, I see several people saying they want links, and I'll get those for you. Um, this, these ones are an investment that I think really pays off because you're not tied to a Happy Valentine's Day stencil. It's just a generic pattern that you can use all year long for all kinds of different projects. And by the color of the ink and the shape that you cut it in, um, that's what determines what the seasonality of it is. All right, have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me.